G'day, my name's Richo, we're here on Haltech TV, and today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on customising your Haltech dashes, and in particular we're going to talk about custom needles, and also how to import a dash that you've got from somewhere else. Now one of the questions that we often get asked is in regards to needles, and how do I add my own needle onto a gauge on a Haltech dash, and it's actually really simple. So first thing I'm gonna do is open up a new screen. I'm gonna to go to a blank screen over here. And now that I've got my blank screen open, I'm gonna right click anywhere in there, and I'm going to add a component. And let's say I wanna add this retro circular gauge. All right, so we've got that there roughly in the middle of our, uh, in the middle of our screen, and when I want to add a new needle, it's pretty simple. Scroll down to Needle Image Source and hit Choose File. So for some of this stuff, you will need to have a little bit of graphic design skill. If you don't have any graphic design skills, that's okay. Ask a mate, pay someone, whatever. I'm not here to teach you how to be a graphic designer. But once you've got your designed assets ready, you can import them into NSP. The one thing that's really important with a custom needle is that it is standing straight up vertically. That's the one most important thing. Your needle can be anything. It can be a, a straight line. It can be a, a, an arrow. It can be a round circle. Um, you, the imagination runs wild. It can be a lot of stuff. Um, but the one thing is that it is actually pointing directly upwards. So I'm going to import a file from my PC now. And I've got this needle that I've made in Photoshop. Now it is a PNG and it's got a transparent background. So that's it. Pointing straight up, PNG, transparent background. I'm gonna use this selected file. Okay, and we can see that that's imported the needle, but it's not in the right spot. If we go into simulation here and uh, move the slider, we can see that the, the needle is certainly moving around the gauge, but it's not, uh, it's not pivoting from the right bit. It's not in the center and it's not long enough. So the way that we change that is we have a look at the needle image offset. So that's just this box here and we can play around with it. I'm gonna say that I want to change that needle image offset by negative 50%. It's still not there yet, as we can see. It's, it's nearly there, it's not quite right. Let's move it a bit further, negative 85%. I reckon that's spot on. Now I can go in here and I can change the fonts, I can change the colors, uh, I can change the number of tick marks, etc. and I can really make this dash mine, but especially now that I've got my custom needle, uh, it's, it's the way I want it to be. So the other trick I'm gonna show you now is how to use a needle as a bar graph, which doesn't make a lot of sense when you say it out loud, but it will when I get into it. So this one, we wanna use a, a gradient as the background, as the needle, and we want to use a mask. We want to put something over the top to hide the needle itself. But to start with, I'm going to import the mask. So again, I'll add a component and then I'll add an image. I'm going to choose file and the image that I want to bring in is this one here that I've called Rev's mask. There we go, I've got my Revs mask. So again, this is a PNG and it has a little bit cut out of it that is uh, a transparency behind it. That's where I want my bar gauge to go. And, uh, and that's what we're going to see through it. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it's exactly the same as using a layer mask. Um, but yeah, that's where my, my needle is gonna go, which is going to be my gradient and that's gonna make the bar. So the next thing I wanna do is add another component on top of that. And I'm gonna add this retro circular gauge again. And it's gonna look a little bit messy here for a bit, but don't worry, we'll sort it out. The next thing I'm gonna do is go into my palette colors on my gauge here, and I'm going to set all of the opacity on these to zero. And what that's gonna do is hide all of the numbers, hide all of the tick marks, hide the warning, what I'm not going to make opacity zero is the needle because that's the thing that we want to be able to see. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my gauge start angle and I want it to start 
flat, horizontal, so I'm going to make it negative 90. And then my gauge end angle is going to be plus 90. It's going to be flat as well. The next thing I want to do is change my image source. And as I said, I'm going to bring a gradient in. I'm going to choose this red to black gradient. And that will change that needle into the gradient file. So with your gradient file, I've made this one in Photoshop. Again, you need to make sure that the start of your needle, the start of the gradient is completely vertical, straight up and down. Now what I'll do is I'll have a look at the Z axis here, Z position axis. So your Z position is the layer order that all of your components are on your dash. So zero being the background and then layers on top of that, in front of that. So right at the moment, this Z position for this component, this needle, is number two. I want to move it behind the other layer, which I know is number one, so I'm going to make this one zero. And that moves the needle behind the bar gauge. And then if we simulate this, there you go. And that's how you put a mask over a gradient needle to make it into a bar gauge. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you today is how to import a screen to your dash. So you might get your hands on a new screen, maybe you downloaded it from our Facebook group, a uh, friend sent it to you, you paid someone for it, doesn't matter. You want to bring that into your dash, but you don't want to delete all of the screens that you've already got in there. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I've got my dash map open in NSP, and I can see that I've got classic screen in the number one position, digital matrix in the number two position, and I want to add my third new screen into the number three position. You can have up to five, but for me, I only want three. So I'm going to add it into that number three position. That's fine. Here's how we do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the one that I want to import. And I'll open Revs, which is the one that we made earlier on. Revs is now open. Now I can see that it is in the number one position. If I try and import that onto my other screen now, it's going to write over the number one position. Or if you're not careful, it will write over all of your dash map completely. So we want to avoid it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another screen. Then I'll do it again. Back up to my screens. Add a screen, blank screen. Okay, I've now got three screens on my Revs dash map. I'm going to move Revs to the third position because that's where I want it to be on my, on my actual screen. So I'm going to save that now. Then I'm going to reopen the original example that I had. That's now open and I want to import the Rev screen. So I'll go up here to File, Import and Upload, and I'm going to pick this Rev screen. So it tells me it's preparing. In the next Import or Upload checkbox screen, I'm going to pick that I want to import screens, and I know that I want to pick the third screen, because that's where I've moved it to and I'm going to import the selected items. And there you have it. I now have my three screens. I'll write those all to my dash on the thing here and we'll be able to see that I can now switch through from classic screen to digital matrix to my new revs in the third position. And that is how you import a screen without wiping over all of your other screens in your dash. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have, give us a like. If you'd like to know anything more, drop it in the comments below. My name's Richo and I'll copy you later.